What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to write a cubic function that's represented by a graph, right? So this is the graph that we're gonna use right here. Now, one thing that might stand out are the x-intercepts. So again, that's just where the graph crosses the x-axis, right? So we have three x-intercepts. We have one here at x is equal to zero, x is equal to two, and x is equal to five. So let's write those out, because those are important. So we have them at zero, two, and five. Okay, so since we know the x-intercepts, we can use the intercept form of a function to write out our function. So it's gonna be f of x is equal to a times x minus p times x minus q times x minus r. Okay, so since we have three x-intercepts over here, that's why we needed three sets of parentheses over here. So x minus p, x minus q, and x minus r. Okay, and that's normally gonna be the case with cubic functions. You're normally gonna have three x-intercepts, so three sets of parentheses. Okay, and just to break this down again, this a right here is just a coefficient, and then p, q, and r are your x-intercepts, right? So that's why, again, since we have three x-intercepts, that's why we need our three sets of parentheses right here. Okay, so let's start filling this out. So we're going to have f of x is equal to a, and then in this first set of parentheses, we're going to put our first x-intercept, which is a zero. So we're going to write x minus zero. And then here we're going to have x, and then here we have a positive two. Now, when you plug in your x-intercepts into your parentheses over here, you have to change the sign, okay? So since we have a positive two here, we have to write it as a negative two or minus two over here, okay? And then same thing with the last one here, we have a positive five, so here we have to write it as x minus five. Okay, the last thing we have to solve for here is a. And the way you solve for a is by using basically the fourth point that we're given here that is not an x-intercept, and you plug that in to your function, okay? So um, three, we're gonna plug in for x, and 12, we're going to plug in for y, or in other words, f of x. So here, this is gonna be equal to 12, right? So we're gonna say 12 is equal to a, and then in parentheses, x minus zero, but again, we're gonna plug in a three for our x's, so we're gonna have three minus zero times three minus two times three minus five. So then here we have 12 is equal to a, and then three minus zero is just three, 3 minus 2 is equal to 1, and 3 minus 5 is equal to negative 2. All right, 3 times 1 times negative 2 is equal to negative 6. So this is, I'll just write it over here, uh, we have 12 is equal to a times negative 6. And then to solve for a, we'll divide both sides by negative 6. All right, those cancel out. So 12 divided by negative 6 is equal to negative 2. So we get negative 2 is equal to a. All right, so that's where we're going to plug in for our a right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring this down right here. So this is gonna be f of x is equal to negative two. And then here we have x minus zero. So this we can really just write as x. Okay, because when you add or subtract zero, it doesn't change the value of x, right? So whenever you have an x minus zero, you can simply write it as x. Okay, and then here we have x minus two and x minus five, right? So x minus two, times x minus five. Okay, now multiplying all this crap together, negative two times x, that's equal to negative two x. And then here we have um, a binomial, right? x minus two times x minus five. So in order to multiply two binomials together, you just need to FOIL. So if you don't remember what that is, I'll link a video to that in the card above, but this stands for first, outer, inner, last. So that's the order that you multiply the binomials in. Okay, so you're gonna go first, then outer, then inner, and then last, okay? So multiplying that all together, we're going to get x squared minus 5x minus 2x plus 10. All right, combining like terms here, we have a negative 5x and a minus 2x, so that's equal to negative 7x, so then this is equal to negative 2x times x squared minus 7x plus 10, all right? And I'm gonna run out of room, so I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. So then this is going to be equal to, uh, the last thing we have to do here is just distribute, right? So we're going to multiply this negative two x times this 
uh, first term, the second term, and then that last term. So then negative 2x times x squared is equal to negative 2x cubed. Negative 2x times negative 7x is equal to positive 14x squared. And then negative 2x times positive 10 is equal to negative 20x. All right, here's our cubic, right? There's the three, that's what you're looking for. So here's your final answer. Boom. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.